Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, the CDC is making another prediction about how many people will die from coronavirus complications by the end of next month. Outside with live cam, 37 degrees out at the airport. We will get a Thursday forecast coming up. Good morning to you. It is Thursday, January 14th. Thanks for joining us. Bundle up again. It's another cold morning at 37 degrees, but actually it feels not as cold as yesterday. Morning. I agree. Let's get Mike back in here and see how things are looking here as we get closer to wrapping up the work week. Good morning to you, Mike. Good morning. We'll cool down a couple more notches, uh, probably not quite as chilly as yesterday, and then huge warm up. Then it cool down and then when it's going to be kind of a roller coaster today a little bit. So we're going to about almost double our low temperatures this morning later on today and we got clear skies. No reports of any fog anywhere around the area and uh, like I said get ready and we're going to hit our high temperature about mm, say early afternoon, obviously a little bit sooner in portions of the hill country. So 37 here in town, 29 in Kerrville. Yes, overall these temperatures are up. Uh, just a couple of degrees from where we where, were yesterday. Stinson is uh, 31, same thing at Pleasanton as of right now. But again, we'll cool down a couple of more notches here, and then it's going to be really, really warming up. And we're going to gain at least about 30 or so between now and noon. Uh, Mountain Cedar did go up slightly from the previous day's reading. So just the past couple of days, maybe... 20, 50 points, something like that, but uh, no huge surges. We're going to have to wait and see what happens because, like I said, it is definitely going to be windy later on today. That may uh, give one last good shake to some of those mountain cedar trees. So I think we're going for 34 here in town. Clear, cold, southwesterly wind, and with those southwesterly winds, preceding that front throughout the late morning and early afternoon. That's really going to help to warm things up. So we're going to top off going for 70, but that will be a roughly two o'clock here in town. Wind shifts around to the northwest and temperatures will be dropping by dinner time, at least about low 60s here in town, much cooler than uh, tomorrow back down to the kind of normal and below normal side. Weekend forecast is coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority getting ready to hit the roads. Here is Samuel King. What's going on, sir? Uh, good morning, Mike. Good morning morning everyone we have uh some construction out and about, but things are generally quiet. This including here at uh, 151 at 410. This construction should be uh, wrapping up within the next hour or so. Uh, let's go say hello to our friends south of San Antonio, south of Catula here. This is 35 southbound in LaSalle County. There's about an eight mile closure there. There's a major accident this morning, uh, we're told. So if you're heading down to uh, Laredo, for instance, that's something to watch out for today. 35 closed, a big stretch of 30 five closed uh, for the next several hours, it would appear. And if you're coming up from uh, the south from 16 minutes from Lytle on 35, uh, 30 minutes from Pleasanton this morning, 26 minutes on 35 in from New Braunfels. And here's a look at a trans guide 1604 at Wiseman and 281 at the quarry looking fine this morning. Mark Stephanie over to you. Thank you, Samuel. COVID-19 cases and deaths remain a serious concern for our area. During last night's briefing, Metro Health said they expect the number of deaths to continue to go up. Stephen Cavazos is live this morning and has the latest on our local numbers. Stephen. Well, good morning, Mark. That's right. As the number of uh, we're now seeing actually more than 1000 new COVID-19 cases in our area and health officials say as that number continues to climb, so will the death toll. Now we know that 25 new deaths were reported during last night's briefing. Health officials say that's coming from the last two weeks. If you break that down, that's more than one death a day. Now, Metro Health does say some of those new deaths come from nursing homes. And as of right now, there are still 199 people on ventilators. Now, right now in our area hospitals, there are about 1,400 people that are still in our area hospitals. We know that 393 are in intensive care units uh, and 237 are on ventilators this morning. Reporting live this morning, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Meanwhile, the CDC is making a new projection on how many people could die from COVID-19 in the United States by February. This as the nation records more than 23 million cases. CNN's Meredith Wood has the latest. Thousands upon thousands of people gathering in a global pandemic, celebrating the Alabama Crimson Tide football team's national championship victory. And Tuscaloosa's mayor isn't happy about it. We are disappointed. We do believe it's larger than any celebration that we've seen in recent memory. This is the CDC forecast that the U.S. could be facing up to 477,000 deaths by early February. And hospitals and funeral homes are becoming overwhelmed. Our morgue capacity is very high. Because we're having this backlog, 
now I have several families waiting in line to schedule a burial, to have cremation, to have something done and have their loved one at rest. Now, as states move to open mass vaccination sites in places like stadiums and even Disneyland, pharmacy giants are ramping up for the wider vaccine rollout. CVS saying it will soon be able to administer 1 million doses of the COVID-19 vaccine per day. And Walgreens expects to administer 30 million doses of the vaccine by the end of the summer. And we're making sure that everyone is ready to get, get after this as soon as the vaccines become available in mass, which we believe will be probably March, April. I'm Meredith Wood reporting. Here at home, there continues to be a high demand when it comes to the COVID-19 vaccine. WellMed sites on the city's south and west sides have distributed more than 4,700 doses in just three days. That's according to Councilwoman Adriana Rocha Garcia. Phones are also busy with more than 5 million calls happening at those sites. Metro Health is hoping to streamline the two-dose COVID-19 vaccination process at the Alamo Dome. From here on out, they will be scheduling the second appointment for recipients on site. Those who received the first dose of vaccine before noon yesterday will be getting a call from Metro Health to schedule that second appointment. If you miss that call, you can also call 311 and hit option eight to make that appointment as well. 436, 37 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, a first look at a one-on-one -on -one interview with Jacob Blake in his first TV interview since a caught on tape incident where he was shot seven times by police in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Latest on the second impeachment of President Donald J. Trump as we get closer to Inauguration Day for President-elect Joe Biden. And taking a look outside with live cam, a little cold for now, but we are expecting sunshine again. We will check in with Mike after the break. Lawmakers continue to move forward now that President Donald Trump has been impeached by the U.S. House for a second time. The president later released a video statement in which he made no mention at all of the impeachment, but appealed to his supporters to refrain from any further violence or disruption of Joe Biden's inauguration. More than 30 House Democrats are also calling for an investigation into members of Congress who they say acted, quote, suspiciously and gave, quote, reconnaissance tours of the Capitol to the day before the attack. Investigators from the World Health Organization are now in Wuhan, China. They arrived today to help scientists look into the origins of the coronavirus. The team is undergoing COVID-19 swab testing and will have to go through quarantine before they can start their field research. The visit comes as China reports its first COVID-related death in almost eight months and new daily cases are at their highest level since July. And time to get new lottery tickets. No one won the Powerball jackpot after last night's drawing, sending the top prize to about $640 million. That was the 34th drawing in a row without a winner. However, two people in Texas won the $1 million second prize, one in Corpus Christi and one in Waco. Hopeful Powerball millionaires will have another chance on Saturday. Mega Millions is up to $750 million for tomorrow night's drawing. Between the Powerball and the Mega Millions jackpots, nearly $1.4 billion are up for grabs. It is Thursday. That means your Spurs are returning home from their longest road trip of the season so far with a 4-1 record. Tonight, they'll take on the Houston Rockets, who are 3-6 on the season so far. That game is set for tip-off 6-30 over at the AT&T Center. No fans there, of course, but go Spurs, go. And a different Houston Rocket. Yes. James, <laughs> oh, that mega trade with James Harden headed yes, to Brooklyn. I know. Yes, go Spurs, go. <laughs> Time now is 441, 37 degrees. Was losing weight one of your New Year's resolutions? Well, still ahead, we'll show you some tech that can help you shed some pounds. And also next, a man is opening up about being shot seven times in Kenosha, Wisconsin this past summer. And welcome back. It is 444. Jacob Blake is speaking out in his first interview since he was shot by a police officer in August. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an yeah, ABC off, News yeah, exclusive. Right, What's going through your mind? Michael Strahan, one-on-one -on -one with Jacob Blake in his first TV time. interview since this caught on tape incident in August. The 29-year-old father shot seven times by police in Kenosha, Wisconsin, leaving him partially paralyzed, all unfolding as his sons watch from the back seat of the car. 
The incident once again sparking protests across the country. Seven times. I kind of went limp, but all I remember at that point was kind of leaning back, looking at my boys. I said, Daddy, love you, no matter what. I thought it was going to be the last. <clears throat> I thought it was going to be the last thing I say to them. Thank God it wasn't. The ABC News exclusive interview I mean, coming like up that. at 7 a.m. With your GMA me. first look, I'm Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Many of us have gained a little extra weight during the pandemic. And if you're trying to get in better shape, 12 on your sides, Marilyn Morris shows how you can use a smartwatch to help. Florida's Quintavalle says the pandemic has had an impact. I think I gained weight because I got I let myself go. I let myself get depressed. I didn't want to work out. A gadget like a smartwatch or fitness tracker may help. Both can boost fitness by counting steps, checking heart rate, tracking sleep, and reminding you to keep moving even when you work from home. The Apple Watch has long dominated Consumer Reports ratings, partly because they're easy to pair with the iPhone and have a very accurate heart rate monitor. The new Series 6 is no different, but it's it's pricey. For a less expensive option, there's the Apple Watch SE, which is near the top of their ratings. More of an Android person? Consumer Reports says the Samsung Galaxy Watch 3 is a great option, but also expensive. Don't need all of those smart features? A fitness tracker might be a good option for step counting and heart rate tracking. Their top rated fitness tracker is this model from Garmin. Another highly rated option is the Fitbit Charge 3, easy to use with both iPhones and Android. No matter what type of wearable tech you choose. A smartwatch or a fitness tracker is a lot like a gym membership. It's only helpful if you actually use it. Something Lourdes is already doing. Now I'm in the journey of getting back in track and losing this weight and not looking back. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And that's 447. Let's go ahead and check the roads with Samuel King. How are things looking? Well, for most uh, of the area, you have time uh, this morning. If you want to take that uh, early morning walk or around the neighborhood to get some fitness uh, going because things look pretty good. Well, we do up here in uh, Comal County, we do have uh, this construction going on at 35 at uh, Kohlenberg Road uh, this morning. So that's something to watch out for there. Uh, taking a look at I-10 on the northwest side between Bernie and downtown, uh, 26 minutes going uh, out to Bernie, 25 minutes coming into town and then inside uh, 1604, uh, 12 to 13 minutes uh, each direction. So uh, that's a good thing there for you this morning. And looking at Transguide 281 at the quarry, traffic uh, moving well, as does I-10 at Frio, guys. Looks good out there. Thank you, Samuel. Mm -hmm. You had a bit of an adventure Sunday. I did. So uh, for folks that didn't know, I've been out all week. I took my son back up to college. So we took a road trip starting Sunday north of San Antonio. Oh, my goodness. I was watching the thermometer drop and I was like, this rain's about to change over to snow. And boy, did it snow. I haven't wow. seen snow like that in a long time. Pretty much south up from like south of Waco all the way to east of Dallas. In some places, I think I saw four to six inches on the ground. Wow. Okay. Made for an interesting trip. It was, but uneventful otherwise, and we got them all taken care of. You said you have to pull over? <laughs> no, no, just everybody was crawling along. I mean, of course, some folks, you know, going way too fast for conditions, yeah. but <laughs> par for the course. Just like living up north again, huh? Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, nothing like that in the forecast. We do have another front moving through later on this afternoon, and it's just going to kind of put a lid on temperatures, basically, because we're really going to warm up out ahead of it. Yesterday, beautiful uh, sunrise. Thank you, Yvonne, for this KSAC Connect picture. And this is pretty much what it's going to look like uh, again today. We're going to have a just fantastic sunrise, a lot of sunshine today. Nothing going on out there as of right now and high temperature yesterday did make it up to 64 degrees. So we were just a couple of degrees above normal. Actually, we have now started. We've finished the coldest time of the year. Historically, the 30 year average. And so now the normal high temperature is 63 as opposed to being 62 degrees. So we're basically at normal yesterday. Everybody really consistent in the mid 60s. Difference today at about uh, five, six, seven degrees to that. So we're going to be upper 60s and low 70s around the area. This is going to be uh, that I know that <clears throat> excuse me. Graphics says 4 p.m probably even a little bit sooner than that, and we'll see the front move on through here. Here's what it looks like with the uh, humidity. Dew point temperatures, again, remain on the low side, very comfortable, and it's going to be about 2, 3 o'clock as that 
moves on through here. We will have a southwesterly wind out ahead of it, west to southwest. So that's what's really going to help to you get that downsloping wind, and that's what's really going to help to uh, warm things up. So again, it's going to be early to mid afternoon. We hit our high temperature, and we'll continue to drop down, probably low 60s or even upper 50s by dinner time. Obviously, cooler in the uh, hill country, and then that cooler air is going to continue to uh, kind of work its way in here, or the drier air on Friday, and it will be cooler on Friday. Not anything. Bone chill. I mean, down in the 30s again, but staying about upper 50s, maybe 60 on Friday. And then we'll start to kind of get back up closer to normal by uh, Saturday. So satellite picture, obviously there's nothing out there and we're really not going to see anything. And this front's going to move through with uh, other than the wind, which will be out of the northwest about 15, 25 miles per hour. Um, no fanfare as far as, uh, you know, a couple of clouds perhaps, but all the moisture stays up there to the north. And you can see the heart of that is this low up here to the north of us. And there right along that cloud band right there is that front moving on through here. Rain chances won't really come into the picture till probably maybe late Monday. I don't think we'll see anything on Sunday as of right now. That's um, kind of out of the picture, but so it'll be late Monday into the mid part of next week with our uh, rain chances coming up. 67 degrees today at noon. And then again, I think we hit the high temperature today at the asterisk right there. That's going to be early afternoon. So by late afternoon, we'll already be down in the uh, lower 60s by dinner time, early evening hours. And it is also going to be breezy. And then tomorrow we start off 38 degrees, 59. That's it for a high temperature. A lot of beautiful sunshine around here. Uh, clouds will be increasing over the weekend, partly cloudy Saturday, more clouds Sunday, 58 degrees. Uh, not a bad day on Monday, long holiday weekend, of course, this weekend, and then kind of mild toward the middle part of next week, a warmer, milder start of next week, and then rain chances Tuesday, maybe late, late Monday, Tuesday into Wednesday. Weekend looks good, though. Yeah, weekend overall looks, looks very nice. So nice three-day weekend for a lot of folks. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. 451, 37 degrees. And coming up next, the wait is over for Marvel fans as a new phase of content is debuting on Disney+. Plus. Take a look at your lottery numbers. Pick 3030, zero, zero, Fireball 7. Daily 4, 6986, Fireball 1. Cash 5, we have 5, 15, 19, 23, 27, and a lot of Texas. Those numbers 1, 6, 23, 36, 40, 48. And your Powerball numbers, again, no winner. Uh, 4, 19, 23, 25, 49, Powerball 14, Power Play 2. Good luck. Well, Marvel is set to debut its latest round of superhero content, plus Jeopardy announcing more guest hosts. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. A new vision for Marvel, almost tear. The show WandaVision is Marvel's first streaming series for Disney+, Plus, starring big screen Avengers actors Paul Bettany and Elizabeth Olsen. Bettany plays the powerful android Vision, and he tells ABC News, the show is not your typical Marvel premise. Two super-powered beings um, have been dropped into a idyllic black-and-white 1950s suburban town and they appear to be in some sort of sitcom. WandaVision debuts tomorrow on Disney+. Plus. This is Jeopardy! I'll take celebrity guest hosts for a thousand. Jeopardy! announcing new names for fill-in duties on the show after Ken Jennings' six-week stint is over. He'll be followed by Katie Couric, former NFL quarterback and celebrity Jeopardy! champion Aaron Rodgers, actress and neuroscientist Mayim Bialik, and CBS journalist Bill Whitaker. The show's producers have said they'll take their time picking a replacement for Alex Trebek. Who the best? It's you! Issa Rae no longer insecure. Her Emmy-winning HBO series Insecure coming to an end after the upcoming fifth season. She says in a tweet she's very excited to finish telling the story. And a couple of big-time musicians with birthdays today. Rapper and actor LL Cool J is 53, while Foo Fighters founder Dave Grohl is 52. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News. I like his smile. He's <laughs> Dave Grohl. That was pretty funny. 52. Yeah, 52. 52. Well. All right. Time now is 457 and 36 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, look at what's next for lawmakers now that President Trump has been impeached by the U.S. House of Representatives for a second time. And want some space with that wine? We're going to tell you why a case of wine is on its way back to Earth from the International Space Station. Live from Case at 12. 
Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. President Trump, now the first and only U.S. president to ever be impeached twice. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with details on what's next coming up. Outside with live cam, drop the degree, 36 degrees out at the airport. How much of a warm up today and when will we get our next cool down? Mike is standing by, of course, with your Thursday forecast. Good morning. It is Thursday, January 14th, and welcome back to Mark. And Thank you. Although it is cold today, nothing like what you saw on Sunday, right? Yeah, I was telling Steph and the guys that uh, road trip to get my uh, son back to college, and I was driving through all that snow on Sunday, but it's good to be back south where it's warmer yeah. and uh, <laughs> back home here in San Antonio. Mike, good Morning. Good morning. Yeah, and uh, but it's still pretty cold uh, when you step outside. Grab a jacket, of course, but you won't need it by well, maybe late morning and even by noon because we're going to have such a big, quick warm up, and then the next front's going to move through here, and it's going to be a bit of a roller coaster today as far as temperatures, and also uh, the wind is going to be picking up. 36 right now, and we've got some clear skies out there, and we'll drop down another couple of degrees in the next few hours. And as you see, by noon we're already going to be into the upper 60s. And and then by late this afternoon, dropping down. So the front's going to move through early afternoon, obviously a little bit sooner in portions of the hill country. And that's when the winds are going to be shifting around out of the uh, northwest. It's going to be breezy, very windy, especially in portions of the hill country. And the weather service has indicated close to criteria for issuing uh, wind advisories out to the uh, west. Nothing in place right now, but just keep an eye on that out to the west. The aquifer went up two tenths of a foot in the past 24 hours. Yesterday's reading and mountain cedar did go up slightly from the previous day, but still it's kind of holding down there a little bit. And mold is also on the low side. We're going to have a good looking sunrise this morning because we had a lot of dry air, especially upstairs in the atmosphere. This is the water vapor imagery and that kind of uh, well, kind of orangey shade and that darker gray shade indicates some very dry air upstairs. Uh, notice the northwesterly flow aloft and maybe a, a little bit of a, kind of a milky shade to the sky. Some high wispy clouds later on today as that front moves on through. But other than windy conditions, not a whole lot of fame, not anything as far as any rain. It's going to come through dry. So clear and cold this morning. Front comes through. Big warm up early winds out of the west to southwest are really going to shoot temperatures up. So again, we double basically where we are right now and then the front comes in here and it is going to be windy. It will be cooler. Nice overall. Very nice weekend. Cooler tomorrow, slowly creeping upward temperatures and more clouds throughout the weekend, though. I think we stay rain free all the way through the long holiday weekend and then we are going to be seeing a chance for some rain by midweek next week. And details on that in just a couple of minutes and with the uh, traffic authority, Samuel King. What's going on? I know there's a couple of big things out there, right? Yeah, there's a couple of big things uh, south of San Antonio, but are in immediate San Antonio area right now, things are looking uh, fine. Most of the construction overnight is wrapping up, but we still uh, have this situation here south of Catula on 35 in LaSalle County. There's a major accident here. Uh, 11 vehicles. We're hearing it was a fatal accident involving 18 wheelers and other vehicles, so you can imagine a cleanup for that has been taking a while. This has been going on all night, roughly an eight mile closure uh, south of Artesia Well. So if you're heading southbound on 35 uh, this morning, uh, that's something you're going to uh, look out for. The detour signs are posted, we're told, by uh, Tech Stop. But closer to home in our area, let's take a look at Bandera Road this morning. Uh, 11 minutes uh, going from 410 to 1604, 10 minutes uh, the other way. So a little bit of delay early this morning. And uh, coming in from 35 from Lytle, 17 minutes, uh, 25 minutes uh, to downtown uh, from Bernie on I-10 and 20 minutes on 90 from Castroville. And here's a look at Transguide right now, 37 at Jones, looking fine this morning. Mark, Stephanie, over to you. Following President Trump's second impeachment in the House, the articles of impeachment now head to the Senate for a trial. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest. A stinging bipartisan rebuke of President Trump as his four-year term comes to a close with another impeachment on his legacy. There was a domestic threat at the door of the Capitol, and he did nothing to stop it. Sources telling ABC News the president angrily watched on television as House lawmakers put him in the history books as the only U.S. president to be impeached twice. He must go. He is a clear and present danger to the nation that we all love. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi signing the article of impeachment soon after the decisive vote. 
10 Republican lawmakers joining Democrats to condemn the president for riling up his supporters who stormed the U.S. Capitol last week in a deadly siege. They searched the halls of this building for the vice president who they came to hang for treason. They overran the office of the speaker who they came to assassinate. They sought above all else to seize control of our government in the name of Donald Trump. Trump releasing a video statement soon after the impeachment vote, but making no reference to the historic day, instead distancing himself from the violent mob. No true supporter of mine could ever endorse political violence. Meantime, heightened security in the nation's capital as the investigation continues into the Capitol riot. Thousands of National Guardsmen, many armed, surrounding the building, some resting in the halls of Congress between shifts. <laughs> More than 30 House Democrats now calling for an immediate investigation into members of Congress who they say acted suspiciously and gave, quote, reconnaissance tours of the Capitol the day before the attack. And in a statement, President-elect Joe Biden called the Capitol Hill riot a planned and coordinated attack. He's urging the Senate to move forward with both the impeachment trial and the nation's top business. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. More San Antonio questions or SAQ this morning. We were asked, why do loops asking, accessing interstate or highways have posted yield signs? So the question went on to say that most drivers treat these as stop signs and fail to merge appropriately, causing unnecessary backups. Our Samuel King joins us now with more with an explanation. Oh yeah, we need to hear more about this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got a, a few questions about this and, and related to this from, from our viewers and we thank them for that. So the answer partially in tech Texas yield signs are usually discouraged on interstates, as you might expect, except where there aren't free lanes or where traffic doesn't need to yield. So there are a few examples of these around town. That includes I-10 at Loop 1604 that's out by uh, La Quintero. We saw drivers approach the interchange a little bit differently. You can see here uh, this driver pulling up our, our photojournalist uh, uh, capturing this. Uh, so is the additional poster right? Well, it depends. We did go out to Rhodes Driving School in Holotus. An instructor Roland Garza says when you see one of those red and white yield signs on an on ramp, you're supposed to yield to the oncoming traffic, find the gap, and then keep up with the flow. Not, you know, get, go ahead, go. Uh, but if the lane is blocked, you may have to stop until the way is clear. A lot of people just, I think, um, they're going to just get on there and they expect the people on the highway to make room for them. And the people on the highway, are expecting these people to, you know, do the opposite. So everyone's kind of doing their own drive, their own thing. And that's where we probably come up with a lot of um, accidents or close calls, fender benders. So again, that's where uh, people go wrong, not watching for that gap. And again, as he said, drivers on the main road also have to be aware of at all times. So if you'd like any questions about transportation or traffic around town, let me know. Uh, Samuel King on Facebook or ksat.com slash traffic. We'll be back with another traffic update in a little bit, of course. And coming up at six, we have another related question. This one's on merging, and the answer does involve including using your blinker. Mark, Stephanie, over to you. Your blinker, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> Some people have no idea. Thank you, Samuel. 508. A local woman dedicated her life advocating for inclusion acceptance for the LGBTQ plus community. And now she's being remembered for her work. 80 year old Nikki Valdez died on Christmas Day after an eight year battle. Our Stephen Cavazos is live downtown this morning and tells us how people are honoring her legacy. Good morning, Stephen. Well, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. That's right. The Pride Center of San Antonio refers to Nikki Valdez as a pioneer in the LGBTQ plus movement. They say she fought for civil rights and acceptance in the Catholic Church. Now, for those that aren't familiar with Nikki, she's one of the first openly gay women here in San Antonio coming out in the 1960s. Now, she was also the co-founder of Dignity San Antonio, founded in the 1970s. It's one of the, old, the oldest LGBTQ plus organizations in the city. Now, the organization's main mission is for inclusion in and out of the Catholic Church. And we got a chance to talk to Nikki's wife, Deborah Myers, yesterday, and she tells us that Dignity San Antonio was her life's work. Her spirituality was a very important part of who she was. And she felt like that she wanted to create a space for other people to recognize that they were created in God's image and that they belonged. 
Now, aside from her work with Dignity, Nikki was also involved in and supported many LGBTQ plus organizations, causes and initiatives over the years. Now, coming up in the next half hour of GMSA, we'll hear more from Nikki's wife, Deborah, who tells us she paved the way for others to live their life freely. Reporting live downtown, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Stephen. Time now is 510 and 36 degrees for now. Still ahead, we'll tell you why a case of wine is headed back to Earth from space. And thanks to the pandemic, preparing your taxes is going to be a little different this year. We're going to tell you why next. Outside with LICAM, Mike's Thursday forecast is coming up as we look ahead to the weekend. You're watching GMSA. Glad you're with us. We're back after this break. Well, maybe mid-January, beginning of the year, that means tax season is right around the corner as well. But there is going to be a lot of changes this year because of the pandemic and because of those stimulus checks, our Erica Hernandez explains. It's quiet right now at Snapback Tax Services on Fredericksburg Road, but within a couple weeks, that will all change. This year, because of COVID-19, Snapback and other tax offices are having to change things up and giving customers the option to drive up and drop off their paperwork, do their taxes virtually, or curbside. You can literally just pull up to the office, go ahead and give us a call and let, them, let us know that you're here, and then we'll go out and we'll get all your documents, we'll bring them in, we'll prepare your taxes, and then we'll go back outside so that you can... We can review everything with you and you can sign the documents in your car. As for what you can expect in 2021, those who were unemployed need to keep in mind that they will not be getting the child tax credit. Unemployment is taxable income but not earned income. So child, um, child tax credit, earned income credit, or credits that you would actually receive only with earned income. So people that normally get, let's say, five or $6,000 as a refund because of child credits, that was initially taken away. While that might hinder some, a new credit being offered through a recent stimulus bill will allow those who qualify to use their 2019 earned income in order to get credit for their 2020 taxes. So that's going to save a lot of people's refunds for this year. Now, if you are wondering about those stimulus checks, that is not taxable income. In fact, if you have yet to receive the first or second check, there is the recovery rebate credit where that money will be added to your refund. For more on the 2021 tax season and other tax tips, just head to our website, ksat.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. I was just enjoying the month of January. I've totally forgot about tax season being rather, because last year was such a blur, you know? Yes, it went by pretty, pretty quick. Uh, I, I forgot about it too. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, new year and yeah comes with taxes. It's right around the corner. 515, 36 degrees. And another social media platform banning President Donald Trump from its services. Want to make a name for yourself in gaming? Then make a name for yourself. Even if your office and bank balance are far from glamorous. That means expensing nothing but pizza. Your expenses look good and your looks are set for the month. Going up against this guy and pitching your idea a hundred times. No. Nope. <laughs> no. 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 I like it. He likes it. And you definitely love that. Intuit QuickBooks helps small businesses be more successful with payments, payroll, banking, and live bookkeeping. A must in your medicine cabinet. Less sick days. Cold coming on? Zycam is clinically proven to shorten colds. Highly recommended. Zycam's love Zycam's unique zinc formula. It shortens colds. Zycam zinc that cold. These are both satisfying snacks. At 30 calories, V8 is surprisingly filling. You can have yogurt for 30 calories too, but the portion might be a little less satisfying. V8, the original plant-powered drink. Veg up. In today's Tech Bytes, President Trump has lost another direct line of communication. Snapchat initially suspended his account, but now he will be permanently banned from the social media platform. The company says the decision is based on the president's attempt to spread misinformation and incite violence. And Airbnb is canceling and blocking reservations in the Washington, D.C. area next week because of security concerns surrounding Joe Biden's inauguration. Impacted guests will get refunds and hosts will be reimbursed at the company's expense. A SpaceX Dragon capsule is back on Earth after months at the International Space Station. It was carrying 12 bottles of wine and hundreds of vines grown in space. They'll be replanted here on Earth, and expert tasters will check to see if the journey had any effect on the wine. 
I'd volunteer to try those. Those are your tech bites. Have a nice day. <laughs> Expert tasters. Okay, we Alex Brache. <laughs> learned something new about Alex this morning. <laughs> Just about 520, let's check your traffic authority with Samuel King. Yeah, I wonder how much that wine is going to be once they get it down here. I'm oh, sure that's, that's sure a good it's point. It's not going to be uh, just <laughs> out of the cheap, world prices. The novelty. <laughs> uh, things uh, pretty quiet here uh, in the uh, San Antonio area this morning when it comes to traffic. So you have plenty of time to pick up coffee or something before work. We do have this construction. Uh, it's just south of Calaveras Lake here, uh, 181 between uh, County Road 130 and Loop 1604. There's some intermittent lane closures there. And looking at how that's affecting uh, travel time, times in this part of a uh, bear county not too bad right now eight minutes on 1604 between uh, 87 and 181 and uh, another look here at the southeast I have this in twice double sorry guys it's early um, finally trans guide 1604 at Bandera Road looking fine this morning just wanted to make sure you Got the point that yeah. exactly like. Double reminder. the coverage from Samuel King. <laughs> Just in case nobody was paying attention. <laughs> right. There you go. You never know. <laughs> That's our story and we're sticking to it. Yeah, right, right. We exactly. are. Good morning, Mike. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. And a beautiful picture. I love that. A couple of high wispy clouds out there. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you very much. And I know beggars can't be choosers, but please hold your camera sideways if you can for some of these uh, KSAC Connect pictures. All right. Nothing, uh, no visibility problems out there. We've got some uh, clear skies right now and uh, trying to pick out where the front is. A lot of times, obviously, you can see a very distinct line as far as temperatures are concerned. We're actually cooler right now than it is up there in the panhandle by a good, you know, five, um, six, seven degrees or so. However, when you look at the wind, that tells a little bit more of the story, how the wind is starting to shift around out of the northwest uh, 18, 31 miles per hour in Amarillo and then gusts on top of that. But ahead of it, wind is coming in here primarily out of the southwest. So prior to that front moving through, that's really going to help to warm us up as we go into the late morning and early afternoon hours. So temperatures are basically going to double from what they are right now very, very quickly. And then we'll start to drop down once that front moves through and the windy conditions are going to be uh, picking up. Humidity is, is not that big of a deal. Now, of course, the past couple of days with temperatures dropping down so much and relatively high humidity, that's why we were seeing some of that fog. But with that front moving through, it is going to dry things out a little bit more for the next couple of days. Then the dew points are going to start to come back up here. So that's going to help out with the clouds. Maybe late Monday chance for a couple of showers like late late on Monday. Overall, the long holiday weekend is going to be a very nice and pleasant about normal temperatures, but humidity and dew point temperatures really come up by the middle part of next week, but that's going to help out with some rain chances. Probably not until again next week, late late Monday then going into Tuesday. And here's the uh, computer model. Nothing was happening really up until Tuesday, but we do have that chance for some uh, showers around here. And then that will extend, like I said, into uh, Wednesday of next week. And uh, temperatures will be dropping down a little bit more because there then is going to be another front moving through by roughly the middle part of next week. So it's forecast today, 67 degrees already at noon. So already we're going to be gaining more than 30 degrees just throughout the morning hours. So temperatures are going to be jumping up by leaps and bounds throughout the morning. And then later on this afternoon, 70. But that's going to be early in the afternoon, probably about mm, two o'clock ish. Front moves through windy temperatures will be dropping uh, low 60s or so, maybe even upper 50s by dinner time. And then tomorrow now it's not like like this is going to be a huge Arctic blast, anything like that down to 38 degrees. Yes, a little bit on the cool side of normal and then only up to the upper 50s tomorrow. Saturday, nice couple of extra clouds, more clouds Sunday, Monday, cloudy skies, a little bit of sunshine, 65 degrees, very pleasant day and perhaps a shower late Monday and then better rain chances Tuesday and Wednesday. And a reminder, you still have to wear your mask while on this roller coaster. Oh, yes. Yeah, all of us. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Mike. Right now we're at 524, 36 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, gotta catch them all, a look back as Pokemon celebrates 25 years. It's been 25 years since the phrase gotta catch them all entered the pop culture lexicon. Rick Damagella has a story in the Hollywood Minute. Catching them all for 25 years, the Pokemon Company has announced a year-long celebration of the silver anniversary of the multimedia franchise. The event includes a partnership with Universal Music and a future Pokemon music collaboration with pop singer Katy Perry. Together, 
Here's a sneak peek at To All the Boys, Always and Forever. Based on the best-selling novel, the third flick in the trilogy finds Lara, played by Lana Condor, reaching the end of high school with adulthood right around the corner. The movie debuts February 12th on Netflix. Metalheads get ready to throw the horns. Rhino Records has announced deluxe reissues of Black Sabbath's Heaven and Hell and the Mob Rules albums. The first two recordings from the Ronnie James Dio era of Sabbath will feature remastered audio, along with previously unreleased bonus tracks. The albums drop March 5th. Headbanging in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Oh, Rick. 528, 36 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, eight days have passed since the riot at the U.S. Capitol and preparations to keep the Biden inauguration are underway now. We're going to have a preview. A look at TikTok's new security measures aimed at protecting its youngest users coming up. Hi, good morning. It is Thursday, January 14th. Bundle up. It is 36 degrees right now. Mike Gosterhage is here with a pretty typical uh, mid-January forecast. Yeah, we are a little bit on the cool side this morning. Temperature is down in the 30s. Normal low is right around low 40s. And then we're going to see a huge, and there's an airplane taking off up there, a huge warm-up up through about early afternoon. Then the next uh, front's moving on through here. And with those clear skies out there, you know it's going to be just a uh, spectacular sunrise. We've got a little bit of a wind out of the west-northwest. Overall, the wind is going to be out of the southwest prior to the front moving on through, and that's what's really going to help to uh, warm things up quite a bit. Mountain Cedar on the moderate side, although it did go up just a little bit. The past couple of days have gone up, uh, you know, 20, 30, 50 points, something like that, but not all that much, and mold is on the low side, although it's going to be interesting to see what tomorrow's count is, given the fact we've got that big front moving through later on today, and it's going to be very windy later on today. Winds out of the northwest at 15 to 25 miles per hour, 67 at at noon and then right in between we hit about 70 right around two o'clock this afternoon and then by five o'clock down in the low 60s it will continue to uh, cool off now this is not a huge blast of like arctic air we'll be down about the same temperature tomorrow morning but the afternoon is going to be different tomorrow only upper 50s right around 60 good looking weekend overall details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes getting ready to hit the roads and samuel king your traffic authority what's going on sir uh, good morning mike good morning everyone and around the immediate san antonio area some construction here or there but uh, things generally looking fine but we still have this reported situation here in LaSalle county we had this major uh crash uh last night or yesterday evening uh multiple vehicles involved here uh, on 35 going southbound. So if you're heading again down to the Laredo area this morning south of Catula, uh, that's something to watch out for. Hopefully this gets cleared up here uh, within the next hour or so. We do expect that. Uh, looking at drive times around the area, if you're coming in from New Braunfels this morning on 35 going to downtown, uh, 26 minutes, 28 minutes from 37 on, fr on Pleasant, uh, from Pleasant into downtown San Antonio, and finally 20 minutes on 90 from Castroville. And here's a look at Transguide this morning, I-10 at Frio, looking fine. Stephanie, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. San Antonio's Crime Stoppers are hoping cash will be king when it comes to tips about two recent crimes. They are offering rewards for the right information about two separate robberies. Our Katrina Weber is near downtown with a live report. Now, Katrina, these are separate cases, but they do share some similarities, right? Well, that is right. They are both robberies uh, involving local businesses that ended with employees being hurt. Police say in one of these cases, the employee was seriously hurt, run over by a car. The man in the picture, they say, walked into Don and Ben's liquor on Valley High Drive last Friday, took some merchandise and then ran out to his getaway car. They say a worker who ran after him was then run over by the getaway car as it sped off. The Crime Stoppers also want to catch up with three women who they say assaulted an employee at a CVS store. This happened last month on Petit Jordanton Freeway. Police say two of the women were trying to steal merchandise from that store. When the worker tried to stop them, police say the women began fighting him. They say at one point, a third woman also jumped in and assaulted him. They're hoping that anyone who might recognize any of these suspects will share that information. And it can be done anonymously through Crime Stoppers. The number to call is 210-224-7867 or 224-STOP. 
Reporting live near downtown Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Tensions remain high in parts of the country following last week's domestic terrorism at the U.S. Capitol. Washington, D.C. officials are preparing for potential threats in the days leading up to President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration. CNN's John Lawrence reports. More than 20,000 National Guard troops are expected to help keep Washington, D.C. secure as President-elect Joe Biden is sworn into office. That's more than triple the number of active duty U.S. troops in Afghanistan, Iraq and Syria combined. We need to do everything that we can right now to prepare for a safe and smooth transition of power on January 20th. The U.S. Secret Service is in charge of security for Biden's inauguration, and one goal is to prevent another riot like the one last week at the U.S. Capitol. This is an organized domestic terrorist threat that the country is facing. On Wednesday, the White House released a taped statement calling on the country to be calm. Whether you are on the right or on the left, a Democrat or a Republican, there is never a justification for violence. No excuses, no exceptions. America is a nation of laws. President Donald Trump also said the people involved in last week's siege on the Capitol will be brought to justice. Mob violence goes against everything I believe in. Numerous arrests have been made since the riot, and 31 Democratic members of Congress have asked for an investigation into reports that groups of people were given tours of the Capitol one day ahead of the attack. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Nike says it is pulling financial support from any lawmaker who voted to reject President-elect Joe Biden's win. The sportswear giant is sharing a new policy for its political action committee. Nike says its PAC will no longer support any member of Congress who ignores, quote, principles of democracy, end quote. That includes those who voted to decertify the electoral college results last week. As for the current political climate, Nike said it is not making any contributions at this point in the election cycle. Federal authorities are tired of the friendly skies becoming unfriendly for flight crew members. They're stepping up their effort against unruly passengers. The Federal Aviation Administration plans to launch what it calls a special emphasis enforcement program. The program targets passengers who assault, threaten, intimidate, or interfere with the crew on a flight. Officials say they're seeing a growing problem stemming from those refusing to wear masks during the pandemic. Problem passengers could be hit with a fine of up to $35,000 for violations. They could also be facing potential criminal charges. And time now is 537 and 36 degrees for now. Still ahead, why PayPal has decided to bar President Trump from some of its services. And is it safe for grandparents to visit grandkids after getting a COVID-19 vaccination? We're going to have the breakdown from doctors next. Outside with live cam, waiting for the sun to come up on your Thursday morning. 36 degrees, Mike's forecast still to come. There are lots of questions still out there about the COVID-19 vaccine. One of them has to do with its effect on older relatives. Our Sarah Costa has the details on if it is safe for grandparents to visit other family members once they get the vaccine. Once older adults are vaccinated, but their children or grandchildren aren't, can grandparents safely visit family members? Doctors say yes, but certain precautions are still needed. Now that you've gotten your COVID-19 vaccine, you are protected, right? Well, yes, but it comes down to timing. Dr. Leanna Wynn, an emergency room physician and professor with George Washington University says it depends on if you have received both doses of the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine. She says you are not entirely protected after you receive your first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. Even right after you receive your second dose, it takes another two to three weeks weeks to reach that optimal degree of immune protection. So can you see your grandkids yet if they aren't vaccinated? She says maybe. Remember the vaccine is 95% effective, not 100%. So you may still be able to get the virus and transmit it to your loved ones who aren't vaccinated. Dr. Wen says she also points out that the vaccine has not yet been shown to reduce the transmission of the virus. She explains that you could be protected yourself if you get exposed to someone with COVID-19, but you could still be a carrier of the virus. 
when you get together with your loved ones, you could spread it to those who aren't vaccinated. She says if you want to see your grandchildren, you may still want to take certain precautions of wearing a mask, especially if you're going to be inside or be on the safe side and see loved ones outdoors while keeping six feet apart. Wen says we will most likely have to keep these social distancing precautions up until we reach herd immunity. It is still not known how many people will need to develop immunity. Dr. Anthony Fauci estimates that this could take up to 85% of the American people to be vaccinated. Medical experts say it will ideally be safest to see loved ones without those social distancing guidelines of wearing a mask or staying six feet apart outdoors when both adults and children are vaccinated. Clinical trials of the vaccine for children are still underway. As for when children may start receiving the vaccine, it's predicted anywhere from this summer to the fall. Back to you guys. And time now is 5.43 and 36 degrees. Up next on GMSA, why PayPal's become the latest company to ban Trump-related items from its online services. 5.45, it's in the aftermath of the storming of the U.S. Capitol. It's not just social media companies disassociating themselves with the president. As Max Massey shows us, online commerce and payment services have stopped the flow of money to Trump-related accounts as well. Software maker Shopify removes stores affiliated with President Donald Trump from their platform and payment processor PayPal shut down an account raising funds for Trump supporters who travel to Washington, D.C. Shopify states that Trump stores affiliated with the Trump campaign and Trump organization violated their policies, prohibiting users from promoting or supporting organizations that foment violence. They released a statement reading in part, quote, Shopify does not tolerate actions that incite violence. And based on recent events, we've determined that the actions by President Donald J. Trump violate our acceptable user policy, which prohibits promotion or support of organizations, platforms, or people that threaten to condone violence to further a cause, end quote. PayPal says the group raising money for Trump supporters called Joy and Liberty also violated the rules. The company writes, quote, PayPal carefully reviews accounts to ensure our services are used in line with our longstanding policy. We do not allow PayPal services to be used to promote hate, violence, or other forms of intolerance, end quote. The same policy applies to PayPal-owned Venmo, which Joy and Liberty also lists as a payment option. Shopify and PayPal joined platforms like Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, all disassociating with the Trump campaign and disassociating with the president's messages. Guys, back to you. In your morning consumer headlines, TikTok says it's making changes aimed at improving online safety of users under 16. The short form video app says that from now on, their accounts will be set to private by default, which means only their followers will be able to see their videos. Also, the users under 16 years old can only choose their friends or one at all or not at all to come to comment on their videos. Other changes affect users who are 16 or 17. They will now have to change their settings to allow others to download their videos. TikTok users must be at least 13 years old. Breakfast and dessert are now best friends thanks to the Girl Scouts. Check out Toast Yay Cookies. Yep, they look like toast. French toast to be exact. They're supposed to taste like it too. They're basically the trefoil cookie dipping in, dipped in icing. So if you're tired of the Thin Mints and the Samoas, uh, give these a try. Both, we guess, they are on sale right now. I was wondering what they look like. I, mm -hmm. I saw it on the list. Right. Uh, we have, you know, coworkers who have girls and Girl Scouts. Even and during the pandemic, the yes, sales continue. They continue. And I was like, what's this? Well, I went with Thin Mints again. Yes. Yeah. It's a safe bet. 548, let's check with our uh, traffic authority, and that would be Samuel King. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. I looked right over that. I didn't <laughs> even see that. So <laughs> I might have to order another one for, from, uh, from the folks here at the station. Uh, Traffic-wise, looking good here in uh, San Antonio. Let's take a look at uh, 410, some drive times here between Ray Ellison and 151, about five minutes uh, either way. We mentioned this because later today, uh, there's going to be some uh, intermittent lane closures there, alternating lane closures in both directions between Marbach and US 90 uh, from 9 to 6. They're doing some uh, work uh, out there looking at uh, some of the lanes, doing some inspections. So that's going to be something to uh, watch out for. And here's a look at Transguide right now, 10 at Woodlawn. Uh, that's looking fine this morning, guys. So cinnamon, does it taste like uh, uh, um, French toast? French tastes toast. like cinnamon? Yes. 
I mean, I, I get, I guess. I, guess. I haven't yeah. had it. I mean, they, we, they look like little French. French toast. toast. Yeah, they look like French toast. You right. Know. We need we need a taste test. Yes. Okay, I vote new guy, buy some and shares. <laughs> Mr. King. I will order it. I, I, no, I'll, I'll, I'll get a box. I'll see if it's available. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll pass a hat. We'll share the cost. Okay. <laughs> we were talking about that on SA Live yesterday, and Grubhub is going to start to, I think, yes, deliver as well for, Girl Scout cookies, For too. people who, cool. who don't yeah. know uh, parents of right. Girl Scouts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can order those So coming up. so Hey, first of all, we got Girl Scout cookies. We got pe look at these two little big over there at the Animal Defense League. These are bonded beagles, if you will. They were surrendered together last month by their owners. They must be adopted together. Baron is the one in the pink sweater and an eight-year-old beagle weighing about 27 pounds. That's a lot of beagle. And Marley is the other one, a six-year-old beagle mix weighing about 32 pounds. Big Pup's adoption fee is 60 bucks each, which helps cover the medical costs. And both pets are healthy and have received all their vaccinations and preventions. And again, for more information on these adoptions, please visit adltexas.org. 11300 Nacogdoches, 655-1481 for more information. Of course, like they said, they have to be adopted together because they are best buds. All right, the view we don't usually see. This is from uh, Old Pearsall Park. Great shot. Thank you very much. I love that panoramic view there. And look at those clear skies. That's what we're going to be seeing uh, today. And nothing out there as of right now. It's going to be a spectacular sunrise. 36 in town. A few more readings are coming in now at freezing. Hondo, Port Assistance, and Pleasanton. Also, Kerrville. Uh, in some spots, like Bernie Stage, way, way warmer than yesterday. Same thing, Canyon Lake. We will continue to drop down maybe another couple of notches in the next uh, few hours. And the humidity is still, you know, relative to the temperature, it's still fairly high. We are going to be seeing a front move on through here later on this afternoon that's going to knock that humidity out. Uh, obviously, nothing is showing up on radar as of right now, nor even any cloud cover. There may be a couple of clouds with the passing of that front. But notice how there's no moisture being picked up with it. Basically, it's coming through dry. The heart of it is that uh, all that mess up there to the north of us in the northern plain state. So that's going to come on through here. Uh, big warm up out ahead of it because we are going to have uh, southwesterly winds primarily, and those usually really warm us up very quickly. Then, and that's going to be early afternoon. We hit our high temperature. Then the front moves through. Temperatures will start to drop down to about normal readings, low 60s, upper 50s by late this afternoon in and around uh, dinner time. And it's not like it's going to be a huge, any sort of Arctic blast of cold air. So it'll just put us down to now about mid 30s again tomorrow, a little bit below normal, and then we stay on the cooler side though in the afternoon. Now going into the weekend, Sunday, we're going to have a lot more clouds around here, but this computer model, which I think does a really good job, doesn't have anything as far as any rain. Pretty much out of the picture for Sunday and Monday, maybe late Monday, we start to see a few showers and then we'll have some uh, rain around here on Tuesday as well as on Wednesday. Weekend's going to be roughly normal temperatures, low 60s, low 40s, give or take, and then a little bit warmer to start off first part of next week. Kind of like today on the warm side, 67 already at noon, sunny skies, and then the front moves through uh, early mid-afternoon. Wind's going to be shifting around out of the uh, northwest. 70 degrees, got an asterisk there because that's going to be early afternoon. By dinner time, low 60s, 50-ish, and again, those winds out in the northwest, 15, 25 miles per hour, and they will subside overnight. And again, mid, upper 30s tomorrow, but only 59 for a high temperature. A couple of more clouds over the weekend. And again, roughly normal temperatures, maybe a tad cooler with the clouds on Sunday. And then the long weekend, Monday, good looking day as well. More clouds, but I think any rain is going to hold off until late Monday. And we'll have a couple of showers uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. Very different from last. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and to say the least, very different from last Sunday. That's we'll take it. It's already been a weird year, and we're only 14 days in. I know. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> By 53, 36 degrees. Let's take a look at your winning lot of numbers. Pick three, we have 030, Fireball 7. Daily four, we have 6986, Fireball 1. Cash five numbers 515, 19, 23, 27. Lotto, Texas, 1623, 36, 40, 48. And your Powerball numbers, no winner. Jackpot's up to $640 million. Four, 19, 23, 25, 49, Powerball 14, Power Play 2. 
Good morning, coming up here on GMA, an ABC News exclusive. Jacob Blake speaking out in his first interview since he was shot by police and left him partially paralyzed. Remember that caught on camera incident that sparked protests around the nation? Well, we will hear from him. That and so much more coming up right here on GMA. We want to invite you to join us for our virtual mental health awareness town hall. We'll have a panel of experts to explain mental illness and share how you can make a difference. It's Wednesday, January 27th. For more info, go to ksatcommunity.com. Coming up on GMSA, lots of changes you need to consider before filing your taxes this year. Up next on GMSA, what you need to know about new tax credits that you may qualify for. Let's check Transguide right now. 35 at Cesar Chavez. We have a few more cars on the roads as we approach the top of the hour. There's 281 at the quarry and I-10 at Frio. You're watching GMSA and we will be right back. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It's Thursday, January 14th. We'll get to weather and traffic in just a moment. But first, in the wake of last week's deadly riots at the U.S. Capitol building, the House of Representatives voted to impeach President Donald Trump for a second time. This latest crisis facing President-elect Joe Biden as he prepares to assume office. CNN's Whitney Weil joins us live with the latest. The House has moved at lightning speed to make history, impeaching a single president twice. The consequences of the January 6th storming of Capitol Hill are hanging over Washington. The president impeached Wednesday for an historic second time over a charge of incitement of insurrection is now calling for calm. All of us can choose by our actions to rise above the rancor, and find common ground and shared purpose. The Senate trial is likely to be a cloud over President-elect Joe Biden's first days in office. But in a statement Wednesday, Biden said in part, I hope that the Senate leadership will find a way to deal with their constitutional responsibilities on impeachment while also working on the urgent business of this nation. This comes as security concerns are growing over the threat of possible violence ahead of next week's inauguration. This is a mega assault on our Constitution. In preparation, more than 20,000 National Guard troops are expected in Washington. D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser is urging people not to come to the Capitol and wants to put public gatherings on hold. We know that is the right choice and the best way to keep everyone safe. Federal law enforcement has arrested more than 30 people on charges related to the insurrection, as Democratic members of Congress are calling for investigations into some of their colleagues, who they allege may have helped the rioters. If any member of Congress incited the insurrection or gave inside information, the FBI should investigate them. Federal officials are also pursuing signs that the riot was planned. In addition, they are also warning that there's a perception among protesters that the riot at the Capitol was successful and that may embolden them to commit more acts of violence. In Washington, I'm Whitney Wild reporting. Here at home, taking a look outside with a live cam. 36 degrees for now, but we are looking forward to that sunshine. We're going to check in with Mike right now. Mike says our forecast is kind of all over the place in the next four or five days. Well, yeah, I mean, we, especially today, we're going to have a bit of a roller coaster as far as temperatures are concerned because it's really going to heat up, kind of cool this morning, really going to heat up and then drop down with another front. And that's either an airplane or Venus is flashing right now. So I think it's an airplane right there. A lot of clear skies. And, uh, well, there's another airplane coming on in just on cue. 36 here in town, freezing Port S.A., Stinson down toward Pleasanton, out in portions of the hill country, although... Overall, temperatures are up a, a few degrees compared to yesterday. I think when it's all said and done, we dip down to right around 34 here in town. And Mountain Cedar did go up slightly from the previous day's reading, but not anything by leaps and bounds. Although it will be interesting to see what tomorrow's count is, given the fact we've got a very strong front moving through here later on this afternoon, and that's really going to start to shake up the wind. So again, down another couple of degrees, and then later on this afternoon, it's going to be about, uh, say, 2 o'clock or so as the front moves on through here. That's when the winds are going to be shifting around. So we're up to 67 degrees already by noon. And then at 2 o'clock, we peak at 70. Then temperature is going to start to drop down a little bit to mid to lower 60s, maybe some upper 50s in the hill country by dinner time after that front moves on through here. And again, it is going to be very windy, especially in portions of the hill country. It's not a huge Arctic blast. 
We'll be back down around, say, mid upper 30s tomorrow, but staying on the cooler side in the afternoon. Overall, the long holiday weekend looks very nice. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Hitting the roads, your traffic authority, Samuel King, and the map looks good, but are there still those big problems out there? There is still a big problem to the south of San Antonio, okay. and we do have one reported problem, uh, Mike, here. Uh, this is at 410. At Callahan, we had a report of a disabled vehicle here, and you can see there's a bit of a delay uh, there on Callahan Road, so something to watch out for this morning. Uh, we still have this reported on in our system, this closure on 35 in LaSalle County, south of Catula, and Artesia Wells had a major accident here involving 18 wheelers and several vehicles yesterday that ended up being fatal. So the cleanup for that continues, but we imagine that will be wrapping up here in the next hour or so. And here's a look at some travel times from the south. If you're coming in on 35, from Lido, 16 minutes right now, 28 minutes on 37 from Pleasanton, 28 minutes on 37 and 181 from Floresville, and out to the west, uh, 24 minutes if you're coming into town on Bernie's. So that looks good this morning. And here's Trans Guide 1604 at Bandera flowing smoothly uh, this morning as well. Uh, Stephanie, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. New this morning, a woman is not injured, but she is facing charges after police say she was involved in a rollover crash, trapping her in her car. It happened just before 11 last night in the 6100 block of Crab Orchard. That is in a neighborhood near Evers and Hebner on the northwest side. Police say the woman got in her car after drinking and crashed into two other cars in the neighborhood, causing her car to roll over. Firefighters needed to pull her out of that car because she was trapped inside. They say she was not injured. Police say she is facing charges of DWI. To the pandemic now, local health officials are reporting 1,378 new cases of COVID-19 here in Bear County. Mayor Ron Nuremberg also says the seven day moving average is now just under 1700 cases per day. They also re reported 25 more deaths. Mayor says the high number of hospitalizations will likely lead to more deaths as the pandemic continues. Right now, there are more than 1400 people in the hospital being treated for COVID-19 in Bear County. Northside ISD students doing in-person learning are being asked to return to virtual learning. That's due to the high number of positive COVID-19 cases following the winter break. Since January 4th, there have been 536 new positive cases involving students and staff. The three weeks before starting in mid-December and including the winter break, there were 425 cases total. The superintendent says it is for the best interest of the community to keep students who can stay home at home. He even urges them to continue remote learning beyond the two weeks if possible. Parents that Case has spoke to say they understand that some families do not have that option and hope that any family that can bring their child home will make the right choice. I definitely think that this will help in the overall scheme. We've got to get to a, a state where uh, a place where we are safe. If you are a parent who's willing to stay at home or keep your kids at home for those two weeks, hey, more power to you. But for the rest of us who don't have that option, we're going to have to do what we have to do. The superintendent says this is only a request because the state of Texas mandates school schools must offer in-person learning or a district could lose funding. He also says that extracurricular activities will continue. A new study out of Great Britain shows that people who have been infected with COVID-19 may have immunity to the virus for about five months. Public Health England studied the impact of the infection of more than 20,000 volunteer health workers across the United Kingdom. The study, which has not been peer reviewed yet, concluded that the past infection drops the chances of catching the virus again by 83% for five months. The study did warn that even with immunity, a person can still transmit the virus to others. A trailblazer and inspiration to others. That is how Nikki Valdez is being remembered after many say she paved the way for the LGBTQ plus community. Our Stephen Cavazos is live this morning with how her legacy is being remembered. Hey, good morning. Hey, good morning, Stephanie. Well, it is her life's work, whether it was supporting LGBTQ plus people in the Catholic Church or just lending her voice to other organizations. Many are remembering Nikki Valdez. Now, she was the co-founder of Dignity San Antonio, an organization that aimed to include LGBTQ plus people in the Catholic Church. But she's also being remembered by lending her voice to other organizations. Executive director of the Pride Center of San Antonio, Robert Salcido, tells us in a statement that, quote, Nikki was a pioneer in the 
LGBTQ plus movement, but especially at the intersections of civil rights and faith, end quote. Now, her wife, Deborah, says Nikki was one of the first openly gay women in San Antonio and helped pave the way for others to live freely. Even though we still have a long ways to go, but because of people like Nikki, we're able to, I mean, hold hands at the park. We're able to get married. Now, unfortunately, Nikki died on Christmas Day after an eight year battle with multiple myeloma, a rare form of cancer that affects the bones of the body. Now, Dignity San Antonio is still in operation. We are told it is one of the oldest organizations in San Antonio that supports LGBTQ plus people. Now, her wife, uh, her wife, Deborah, says that Nikki's acts will still live on through the acts of others. Reporting live downtown, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Stephen. Today we answer another SAQ or San Antonio questions, and these deal with another pet peeve for drivers, yielding and merging, especially on the highway. Samuel King is here. Samuel, doing it the wrong way can lead to some close calls for drivers. Yeah, that's, there is a right way and a wrong way to merge and drivers see examples of both on the roads every day. And we do have a couple of uh, questions about this. Desiree wanted to know why do loops accessing interstates or highways have posted yield signs? She says most drivers treat these as stop signs and fail to merge appropriately, causing backups unnecessarily. And Christina asked, why don't drivers know to let others merge or zipper into a lane? We'll start with the first question. In Texas, yield signs are usually only posted where there aren't uh, free lanes or where traffic doesn't need to yield. So uh, there are a few examples of where that's not the case, like at I-10 at 1604 out by uh, La Cantera. We saw drivers approach things differently to uh, say the least when we were out there. So we went to Rhodes Driving School in Helotus to get some best practices. Instructor Roland Garza has been doing this for decades, and he says merging and yielding is all about awareness on the roads and yes it's critical for you to use your blinker especially when getting onto a highway movement and eye and light attracts the eyes of the driver so if the person on the highway is not focused and then they see movement and they see light then they're suddenly you know aware of the situation and we also asked Garza whether Desiree was right about those pesky yield signs on on-ramps. Well, it depends. She says when you see one that's red and white, you're supposed to yield to the oncoming traffic, find a gap, and keep up with the flow. But if the lane is blocked, you may have to stop until the way is clear. But that shouldn't be too long. If you have any questions you'd like answered, let me know. I'm Samuel King on Facebook or at ksat.com slash traffic. We'll be back with another traffic update in just a little bit, Mark and Stephanie. All right, we'll see you then. Thank you, Samuel. 6, 11, 36 degrees. It's science many of us can get behind. We will see what the plans are for some bottles of wine and great finds after returning from the International Space Station. Tax season just around the corner and many companies still making uh, adjustments to work during the pandemic. After the break, we'll learn about changes that are coming this year. And it's another cold morning here in San Antonio. Not as cold as yesterday and Actually, we're looking forward to a nice weekend. We're going to check in with Mike in just a bit. It's quiet right now at Snapback Tax Services on Fredericksburg Road, but within a couple weeks, that will all change. This year, because of COVID-19, Snapback and other tax offices are having to change things up and giving customers the option to drive up and drop off their paperwork, do their taxes virtually, or curbside. You can literally just pull up to the office, go ahead and give us a call and let, them, let us know that you're here, and then we'll go out and we'll get all your documents, we'll bring them in, we'll prepare your taxes, and then we'll go back outside so that you can we can review everything with you and you can sign the documents in your car. As for what you can expect in 2021, those who were unemployed need to keep in mind that they will not be getting the child tax credit. Unemployment is taxable income but not earned income. So child, um, child tax credit, earned income credit, or credits that you would actually receive only with earned income. So people that normally get, let's say, five or $6,000 as a refund because of child credits, that was initially taken away. While that might hinder some, a new credit being offered through a recent stimulus bill will allow those who qualify to use their 2019 earned income in order to get credit for their 2020 taxes. So that's going to save a lot of people's refunds for this year. 
Now, if you are wondering about those stimulus checks, that is not taxable income. In fact, if you have yet to receive the first or second check, there is the recovery rebate credit where that money will be added to your refund. For more on the 2021 tax season and other tax tips, just head to our website, ksat.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. It's now 17 minutes past the hour. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. How are the roads looking now? Well, Stephanie, Mark, uh, things are uh, looking uh, okay uh, right now. We still have this construction reported down here uh, just south of uh, Calaveras Lake on 181 uh, between County Road 130 and Loop 1604. There's some intermittent lane closures here. So that's something to watch out for this morning and take a look how at 1604 in this area between 87 and 181, eight minutes and then eight minutes going the other way as well. And taking a look at Transguide, uh, 10 at Frio, uh, looking fine this morning. Mike, how's the weather looking? Uh, chilly, but beautiful, and I love this picture. And then you went for a picnic. And yeah, when was the last time you just, you know, ate outside, a little picnic out of your back, uh, back deck, back uh, patio, something like that. Although today, if you're outside and doing a little dining outside, hang on because it is going to be very windy, especially later on this afternoon after that front moves on through here. No glow of the sunrise quite yet. We're going to have to wait a couple of minutes to start seeing that. As far as rain, yeah, last weekend was wet. And so, so far for 2021, it's wet. We've had um, just about eight tenths of an inch of rain, a little more than that, which puts us slightly above normal up to this day, just a, um, about an eighth of an inch above normal. However, going back and go back to the 1st of December, because that's the start of the meteorological winter, December, January and February, we've had uh, about one and two thirds inches of rain, and that's almost an inch behind normal. So obviously it was very, very dry for December. At least we're starting off on the, the wetter side. And as far as any rain in the forecast, a little bit of it by the middle of next week. One of the long range computer models then toward the end of next week is looking a little more encouraging. Obviously still just a week away. Here's another front moving on through here later on today. That one's not going to have any rain associated with it. This is just a little bit of extra moisture aloft in the atmosphere, so maybe uh, a few of those uh, high clouds out there. And even on the uh, state map, it's like, okay, find the front. You really can't. There's no distinct line as far as temperatures. Uh, we will drop down a little bit as the front moves on through here later on. So we hit our high temperature, and that's basically because we're going to have some southwesterly winds ahead of that front, really helping to warm us up. The front moves on through here, and we will be dropping down about normal readings, uh, low 60s, maybe upper 50s by later on. Now, there is a distinct line as far as the wind is concerned. 15 mile per hour winds in Lubbock, 29 up there in Amarillo, and it is going to be, like I said, very windy later on this afternoon especially in portions of the hill country. No wind advisories, but the Weather Service said earlier this morning that it is looking at the situation and it's going to be real close to hitting the criteria for any sort of advisory out in portions of the hill country. Nothing uh, going on today, nothing going on tomorrow. Saturday, um, this model really doesn't depict it. I think we see a few more clouds trying to move on in here. And then we get into Sunday and we are going to have some more clouds around. There's another little nudge of call it that of cooler air. So we'll go from say mid 60s Saturday to maybe uh, upper 50s 60 on Sunday. No rain though. That's out of the picture. I know earlier in the week it looked like we were going to have some rain on Sunday. That looks like it's going to be uh, out of the picture and same thing on Monday, perhaps late on Monday. We see a couple of showers and then a better rain chance moves in here by the uh, middle part of next week. So forecast today, it is going to be a nice looking day. Very warm. I mean, huge warm up this morning, 67 at noon, plenty of sunshine. We hit 70 about two o'clock ish then. So that's going to be our high temperature. But by late this afternoon, that will be dropping down, which is why I have that asterisk right there. And it's going to be very windy today. Winds out of the northwest about 15, 25 miles per hour. Not a huge blast of cold air. I mean, we're down to the same temperature basically tomorrow morning, but only staying in the 60 degree range tomorrow. About the same on Saturday, a couple of more clouds uh, back to the upper 50, 60 on Sunday. So a coolish but almost normal weekend. Uh, nice for the extended weekend on Monday, long holiday weekend, 65. So kind of a warmer start to next week and then some rain chances by the middle of the week. Uh, Stephanie's key takeaway from your forecast is there's a nudge of colder air coming this way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not Love a big it. shove, not a big push, yeah. just a nudge. Just, yeah. just right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you, Mike. 621, 36 degrees. Stick up Blake speaking out in his first interview since he was shot by a Wisconsin police officer in August. We're going to have more in today's GMA First Look.
Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Honey, there comes a time when you start to notice things about your body. Mom, I'm 20. It's these elbows. You need Jergens Ultra Healing Lotion. So smooth. Okay, let's work on your feet. Mom. And feel the calm of eucalyptus body butter. Jergens. Does your vitamin C last 24 hours? Only Nature's Bounty does. New Immune 24 Hour Plus has longer lasting vitamin C, plus herbal and other immune superstars. Only from Nature's Bounty. Cranky pated, a bad mood related to a sluggish gut. Miralax is different. It works naturally with the water in your body to unblock your gut. Free your gut and your mood will follow. Right now, join Planet Fitness for no enrollment. Start 2021 with tons of ways to get moving in our clean and spacious clubs. Your fitness is essential. Join today for no enrollment, $10 a month, no commitment. Deal ends tomorrow. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC oh, News really exclusive. Nice, What's going through your mind? Michael Strahan, one-on-one -on -one with Jacob Blake in his first TV time. interview since this caught-on-tape incident in August. The 29-year-old father shot seven times by police in Kenosha, Wisconsin, leaving him partially paralyzed, all unfolding as his sons watch from the back seat of the car. The incident once again sparking protests across the country. Seven times. I kind of went limp. But all I remember at that point was kind of leaning back, looking at my boys. I said, Daddy, love you, no matter what. I thought it was going to be the last. <clears throat> I thought it was going to be the last thing I say to them. Thank God it wasn't. The ABC News exclusive interview I mean, coming like up that. at 7 a.m. with your GMA me. first look. I'm Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Head on my neck. Another social media company has removed President Donald Trump. Snapchat says the president will now be permanently banned after initially suspending his account. The company says their decision is based on what they call the president's attempts to spread misinformation and incite violence. Airbnb canceling and blocking reservations in the Washington, D.C. area next week because of security concerns surrounding Joe Biden's inauguration. Impacted guests will get refunds and hosts will be reimbursed at the company's expense. A SpaceX Dragon capsule back on Earth after months at the International Space Station. It was carrying 12 bottles of wine and hundreds of wine vines grown in space. They'll be replanted here on Earth and expert tasters will check if the journey had any, any effect on the wine. Interesting. Yeah, <laughs> anxious to hear more about that. Yeah, hopefully we'll hear more from it at nine, maybe. Uh, time now, 627 and 36 degrees for now. Well, for a second time, President Trump has been impeached by the House. We'll hear from lawmakers in the nation's capital on that historic moment. San Antonio Crime Stoppers are looking for some help again. This time with two separate robberies. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. President Trump, now the first and only U.S. president to ever be impeached twice. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with details on what's next coming up. Outside with live cam, we've got a takeoff in progress out there at San Antonio International Airport. Ro weather roller coaster gets going with some windy weather. Moving in later today, Mike has the details coming up in just a sec. Hi, good morning. It is Thursday, January 14th, and I kind of like the roller coaster. We have uh, options with our outfits, I guess. It doesn't get boring, that's <laughs> no. for sure. <laughs> no, that's for sure. Mike? Well, it's just one of those make sure the kids don't forget the coat. Oh, that's true. Yeah, because you need it this morning, but uh, not this afternoon because it's going to be very warm. As a matter of fact, we're basically going to be doubling our temperature right now. We are at uh, 36 degrees. Uh, the humidity, not bad. Not much of a breeze out there this morning. Lots of clear skies, and as you saw those planes taking off, good flying weather. Not as many freezing temperatures this morning as what we had yesterday, up uh, just a couple of notches here and there. Mountain Cedar did go up slightly from the previous day's reading, but not anything really off the charts. What's going to be interesting, of course, today's uh, updated count comes out in about, uh, say, 45 minutes or so. But what's going to be interesting is to see what tomorrow's count is in behind the big front later on this afternoon. Because, yes, it is going to be very, very windy. So clear cold this morning. 
and then sunny warm early, meaning we hit our high temperature about two o'clock right as the front's moving on through here. Southwesterly winds going to really help to warm us up. Then the front moves on through temperatures will drop down about uh, say 10 degrees then toward dinner time right in the low 60s and it is going to be like I said very windy. Then as we go in toward the weekend overall a nice weekend. We'll see a few more clouds as the weekend progresses. Temperatures roughly normal low 60s 40 um, ish give or take and then we do have have some rain chances. I think they hold off until after the long holiday weekend up until the middle part of next week. Details in just a couple of minutes getting ready to hit the roads. Traffic Authority Samuel King and once again map looks clear. Anything out there? Yeah, just uh, we have this one uh, incident uh, the disabled vehicle here. This is at 35 at North New Braunfels uh, Avenue, but you can see they're not really impacting traffic uh, too much this morning. So let's take a look at some travel times uh, coming into downtown San Antonio from around the region. Heading southbound on 35 for New Braunfels, uh, 26 minutes. Northbound on 35, 17 minutes. There is some construction south of Lytle, but not much to worry about this morning. 24 minutes on I-10 coming in from Bernie, and finally about half an hour coming in uh, from Seguin on I-10. And this is a trans guide right now, 10 at 1604. We talked about that earlier. Looks fine uh, this morning as to 1604 at Weissman. Stephanie, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. San Antonio's Crime Stoppers would like to see some robbery suspects go from being caught on camera to captured and arrested. They're making an appeal for information about them. Our Katrina Weber has a live report from the downtown area. Katrina, we know these robberies involved some injured victims. Was anyone seriously hurt? One man did have to go to the hospital. Police say he was run over by the suspected robber's getaway car. Well, this happened last Friday at Don and Ben's Liquor on Valley High Drive. The suspect was caught on camera inside the store. Police say that man stole merchandise from the store. When an employee followed him outside, they say the suspect's getaway driver ran over him. That employee suffered serious injuries. A worker at a CVS store also was hurt, allegedly beaten by women who he tried to stop from stealing. Police say two of the women walked into the store on Portite Jordanton Freeway last month and tried to walk out with merchandise. They say when the worker tried to stop them, the women began fighting. Police say a third woman also joined in on the assault, then all three ran away. Crime Stoppers hopes that anyone with information on any of those suspects will give them a call. The number to call is 210-224-7867 or 224-STOP. Reporting live from near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. President Donald Trump now the only person in U.S. history to impeach, be impeached rather twice. Lawmakers in the U.S. House of Representatives voted yesterday to impeach him for incitement of insurrection. It relates to the violent mob of the president's supporters storming the U.S. Capitol building last week. Now the debate looms over how the U.S. Senate will have an impeachment trial when the president leaves office on January 20th. ABC's Faith Abube has more. A good morning. In 2019, not a single House Republican voted to impeach President Trump, but this time around, 10 of them supported it. A stinging bipartisan rebuke of President Trump as his four-year term comes to a close with another impeachment on his legacy. There was a domestic threat at the door of the Capitol, and he did nothing to stop it. Sources telling ABC News the president angrily watched on television as House lawmakers put him in the history books as the only U.S. president to be impeached twice. He must go. He is a clear and present danger to the nation that we all love. Ten Republican lawmakers joining Democrats to condemn the president for riling up his supporters who stormed the U.S. Capitol last week in a deadly siege. They sought above all else to seize control of our government in the name of Donald Trump. Trump releasing a video statement soon after the impeachment vote, but making no reference to the historic day, instead distancing himself from the violent mob. No true supporter of mine could ever endorse political violence. Meantime, heightened security in the nation's capital as the investigation continues into the Capitol riot. Thousands of National Guardsmen, many armed, surrounding the building. In a statement, President-elect Joe Biden called the Capitol Hill riot a planned and coordinated attack. He's urging the Senate to move forward with both the impeachment trial and the nation's top business. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. Court records show former Michigan Governor Rick Snyder will face two misdemeanor charges for his role in the Flint water crisis. 
Michigan's Attorney General Dana Nessel filed for two charges of willful neglect, according to the Detroit Free Press. Each charge is punishable by up to a year in prison or a fine of up to $1,000. Michigan's Attorney General scheduled a press conference this morning to announce the outcome of the state's criminal investigation into the water crisis. It started when Snyder and his team had ordered Flint to switch from city of Detroit water to the Flint River to save money. But the river was corrosive and caused lead poisoning. Several people died. Many Americans are planning on a big splurge when the pandemic is under control. That's according to a new survey by The Lending Tree. The personal financial site surveyed more than 1,200 Americans online last month. 82% of them said they plan to celebrate after they get vaccinated. Some said they were planning a fancy dinner, while others were hoping to take a vacation. But even after a vaccine, many of those asked say they will continue to save as much as possible just in case the virus returns. Starting next month, Costco customers will no longer be able to get some in-store photo services. A retailer says it will close the photo departments in all its stores by February 14. That means services like passport photos, photo restoration, and home movie transfers will not be available anymore. However, Costco says some related services still can be requested online for delivery. Those include prints, photo greeting cards, photo gifts, and business printing products. Costco said the need for printing photos has diminished in stores because of camera phones and social media. There are three Costco locations here in the San Antonio area. Nobody won the Powerball jackpot after yesterday's drawing, sending the top prize to about $640 million. That was the 34th drawing in a row without a winner. The next Powerball drawing is on Saturday. Meanwhile, the Mega Millions drawing tomorrow night is up to $750 million. Right now it is 638, 36 degrees. Northeast ISD is getting ready to launch a new magnet program focused on cybersecurity. We will speak to the district's director of career and technology after the break to learn more. Six forty two, welcome back to GMSA Northeast ISD expanding STEM opportunities for their students with a new cybersecurity magnet program. The new program program will launch next year and will be housed near MacArthur High School. The district is already taking applications and joining us live this morning to tell us more about the new interactive academy is the senior director of career and technology at NEISD, Ben Peterson. Good morning. Good morning, how are you guys? We're good. Great. Thank you, thanks for joining us. So we understand that students in the program's class will begin phasing in during the 2021-2022 school year. Tell us who is eligible at this point and how can students apply? It's a great question. We are opening applications now uh, for incoming ninth graders. Um, so if you're a current eighth grader or a parent of a current eighth grader, um, those are exactly the students we're looking to uh, apply for this program. There's no experience necessary, and you can apply at our website, which is neisd.net slash cyber. Hi, Ben. Well, this is, uh, we were told, a hands-on interactive academy. What kind of coursework can these kiddos expect to see? Yeah, we have some very hands-on coursework uh, beginning their freshman year. Uh, so their freshman year, we're going to be talking a lot about different computer programming applications, uh, virtualization. Uh, from there, the following years, we'll get into things like network administration, uh, network engineering. Uh, later on, like their junior year, we'll be looking at penetration uh, testing and, and vulnerability assessments. And then we're really excited about their, their senior year, uh, where we look to really have these kids working alongside industry, um, doing apprenticeship hours and, and working on in internships, uh, possibly paid internships with some of our industry partners. And then tell us about where the magnet will be housed. Like, tell us about the building. We understand there will yeah. be robotics, including a robotics competition arena. We're really excited about this. This is a vision of our superintendent um, to, to build a what we're calling a centralized magnet program. And it's, it's very unique in that students are able to stay at their home campus. All seven comprehensive high schools here in North, Northeast ISD will be able to keep those students and then they'll come to the magnet program, uh, which you mentioned is, is right next door to MacArthur. It's actually housed in an old Walmart, HEB. Uh, it was formerly an HEB, then a Walmart. And now it's home for our, our new cybersecurity magnet program. Uh, at the end of our construction, uh, which will take place over several phases, uh, we plan to have a large robotics and esports arena uh, within this Walmart, as well as some security operation centers uh, and, of course, a lot of computer labs 
uh, for our students to attend. So we'll have courses in the beginning of the day, middle of the day, end of the day, and students will uh, be given transportation to come from their campus to our magnet program and then back to their home campus so that they don't have to leave their friends or quit participating in, in different activities they participate in. Well, very good. And they can apply, apply right now, correct? Apply now, yeah. Our website, again, it's neisd.net slash cyber. All right. Fantastic. Thank you. Ben Peterson, the Senior Director of Career and Technology with Northeast ISD. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, guys. All right, take care. Now, 645, it's game day, Spurs fans. When our Spurs take the court tonight against the Rockets, they will not see James Harden. Rockets sent Harden to the Brooklyn Nets yesterday as part of a massive four-team trade after he said Houston is not good enough to compete for an NBA title. Meanwhile, the Spurs coming back home after a successful road trip. The Silver and Black won four of five and saw the younger players step up in their roles. We'll see if that continues here at home while Derek White still out. DeMar DeRozan is questionable for tonight's game with Houston. Tough off is for 6.30 this evening at the AT&T Center. You can watch it live on TNT or get the latest highlights and reactions right here on KSAT 12. What a big change for Houston. Yeah, right? I know, but still, go Spurs, go. The game changer. <laughs> 646, let's check traffic now with our traffic authority, and that would be Samuel King. So many changes over there in Houston, <laughs> Stephanie, with the NBA. Uh, things looking relatively quiet here in uh, immediate San Antonio. And some good news, we've been telling you about this uh, a crash that happened overnight or yesterday afternoon down in LaSalle County. 35 southbound has been reopened. So if you're heading uh, south of Catulus, heading south to Laredo this morning, uh, that should be clear sailing. Uh, 410 looking fine this morning here too. We do have this construction uh, later today uh, between Marbach and 90. They're looking at some uh, lights there, some illumination panels. So there will be some uh, intermittent lane closures in that area. So watch out for that. And Transguide right now, 1604 at Bandera, looking good. Over to you. Very good. Thank you, Samuel. Thought that was a fishing pole for a second, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yes. sure, yes. It kind of looks like it. That would be the water in the sky above it. But a uh, very cool shot of them putting up one of those cell towers up there. Very neat. Picture. Out near Brenham. Yeah, thank you very much for that one. That's a really cool shot. So, okay, we are now starting the planet Venus, and there is the spectacular sunrise in store. And we're going to have another gorgeous day today. Hi, yesterday did get up to basically a normal reading. Normal being 63, we got up to 64, and that was pretty consistent around the area. Now today, add anywhere from, say, 5, close to 10 degrees to that, especially off to the uh, west and to the southwest, we are going to be well up into the uh, low 70s, upper 60s, low to mid 70s around here, thanks to a southwesterly wind. But this is going to occur in the first part of the afternoon. So what we have going on is this flow coming in here out of the southwest. Then the front moves through and that's going to be about early afternoon. So by later on this afternoon, we will start to see the wind shift around. It's going to be very windy later on today, especially out in parts of the uh, hill country, and that will pull down slightly cooler air. It's not like this is going to be a huge one of those fronts with a huge blast of Arctic air in behind anything like that, but it will cool us down later on. So we go from 70 early afternoon down to about low 60s, say right around dinner time time in early evening and then the wind's going to be subsiding overnight. Now we will have much, much drier air coming on in here. It's not going to be that much colder tomorrow morning, uh, say about the same temperatures, mid thirties you know, give or take here and there. And then it will stay cooler in the afternoon though, uh, only about say upper fifties or 60 cloud cover, nothing, a couple of high clouds, maybe with that front moving through later on today. And that's going to be about it. Same thing tomorrow. Good looking and very good looking start to the weekend. Then the clouds will start to increase as the weekend rolls on. Although Sunday, you know, earlier in the week, we were talking about a chance of rain on Sunday and that pretty much is out of the picture now. We'll just have some extra clouds around here. Same thing on Monday, basically just a lot of clouds. Any rain should hold off until late Monday into uh, Tuesday, and then we'll have some rain chances going into the middle part of next week. So here's what the upper level winds look like right now. Here's this northwesterly flow that we're gonna be getting into to help with slightly cooler temperatures and that's going to be the situation tomorrow. Then as we go into the weekend, notice how we get into more pronounced flow coming in here somewhat out of the uh, southwest and this is late in the weekend and the first part of next week and that's what's going to be pumping in a lot of that moisture to give us that chance for some rain, like I said, by the middle part of next week. So forecast today, 67 at noon, huge warm up between now and noon. You're going to be able to watch the thermometer go up and then we'll top off early afternoon at 70 and that's why I've got the asterisk right there 
there because that'll be early and then we'll drop down. So this won't be later on later on dinner time about the low 60s and very windy today. Then tomorrow mid 30s about no, oh, anywhere five, six, seven degrees below normal, only up to 59. Roughly the same thing on Saturday. A few more clouds on Saturday and Sunday. So cool ish jacket weather, maybe in the afternoons and uh, pretty nice on Monday. Long holiday weekend. Rain chances midweek. OK, well, it's just nice. Yeah, yeah we'll nice weekend. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 650 now, 36 degrees. And a dream week, which celebrates humanity and bringing people together, kicked off this week. Join us tomorrow on GMSA, where we take a closer look at a cemetery tour highlighting notable African Americans in San Antonio. As we go to break outside with live cam one more time as we check on our Thursday morning sunrise news you need to know before you go. And we'll check back in with our traffic authority. Good morning, coming up here on GMA, an ABC News exclusive. Jacob Blake speaking out in his first interview since he was shot by police and left him partially paralyzed. Remember that caught on camera incident that sparked protests around the nation? Well, we will hear from him. That and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Four people who allegedly committed crimes won't be on the run for long if the Crime Stoppers have their way. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Crime Stoppers trying to help police track down those suspects and they're hoping for help from the public. They are hoping that someone will recognize the man who was caught on camera at Don and Ben's Liquor on Valley High Drive. San Antonio police say he stole merchandise from the store last Friday. When a worker tried to stop him, police say the suspect's getaway car ran over him. A worker at CVS on Poteet Jordanson Freeway also was healing after his run in last month. Police say three women beat him after he tried to stop them from stealing. Anyone with information on any of these suspects is asked to call Crime Stoppers. The number is 210-224-7867 or 224-STOP. Reporting near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Sound 5 Chill. Let's go ahead and take one last look at traffic with Samuel King. And Stephanie and Mark, things picking up on the roads, but not many incidents so far. Let's take you to the uh, north side. This is 281 between Bulverde Road and 1604 at eight minutes, uh, seven minutes uh, going uh, northbound and uh, nine minutes going southbound and 28 minutes all the way from Bulverde into downtown. 21 minutes on 90 into Castroville, Mike. Beautiful start this morning. Once again, one of these fantastic uh, sunrises just had a plane taken off. And as the pilots like to say, severe clear out there and uh, temperatures are in the mid 30s. We're at 35 right now and we'll can warm up double that later on. Early afternoon, we get to 70. Then the front moves through and we'll be down around low 60s by about dinner time and very windy today as well. What do you guys say we do this again in about 24 hours? Yeah, yeah sure. Wrap, sure. Wrap up the work week. We'll be back. Deal. OK, <laughs> we'll, we'll be here in the donuts. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you back here at 9.